Hi guys, it's Eleonora. Today we're gonna make this bloody trail effect from Super Meat Boy. I had a lot of fun making this and I hope you enjoy. I was inspired by these cool blood effects from Super Meat Boy. They're so satisfying to look at and I thought it would make a fun tutorial. But before we start, I hope you're all doing well. And if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. There's also a Discord server if you would like to come and hang out. Let's get started. I'm gonna use an acid from Kenny that I got from Itch. I'm just gonna use just the one tile from this price sheet for this project. I've opened that up in Acid Pride, but you can use anything really. I'm just gonna pick a red color and start adding frames. Looking at the Meat Boy animation, it looks something like this. We start with one line of red, then that kind of continues to spell, and at the end they had a bit of an elastic effect like this. Just keep adding frames and go one line of pixels at a time. It's very quick to animate and mine end up looking like this at the end. Now I'm just going to save this and export to Unity, including the original tile. Let's drag our tile to the scene and put it inside an empty game object. And let's rename them. And now with our tile object selected, let's open the animation window. We can do that by going to Window, Animation, Animation. Click on Create and name the first animation. We need to make two animations. One static, that would be the default one before the player has stepped on it. I'm naming this Tile Static. For this animation, just drag the plain tile at the start of the timeline and that's it. Let's add a second animation. Go to the drop down and click Create New Clip. I'm naming mine Tile Bloody. Now let's drag the frames we drew one by one at regular intervals. You can adjust the timing to your liking. Let's play it to see what it looks like. Now with the tile selected, let's go to the animator window. If you don't have that open, you can go to Window, Animation, Animator. We already have a default transition to static on entry since it was the first animation we made. But if that's not the case for you, make sure you set that one to default on, on entry. Now add a transition from static to bloody. Right click on static, make transition, and then click on bloody. Add a new boolean parameter called stepped on. And we want to transition from static to bloody when this parameter is true. Click on the transition from static to bloody and under conditions, press the plus sign to add a parameter. Since this is the only parameter we have, this all look correct. Now I'm just going to import a free animated character from the asset store to use as an example and I thought this guy looked kind of cute. I'll leave a link in the description. Now that that's imported, I'll create an empty object to hold the player and then drag the player prefab we just imported inside of it. I'm just going to add a Capture Collider 2D to the player and then a Rigid Body 2D and I'll also create a new script called Player Script. Then on the Tile object, I'll add a Box Collider and also a new script called Tile Script. So let's start with the Player Script. We're just gonna create a very simple player controller. We just need a float for the speed, a float for the jump force, and a private float for the player's input, which I'm naming move input. Let's add a private rigid body 2D, RB. And in the start function, we can set this to the rigid body attached to the player. RB equals get component rigid body 2D. Now in the update function, let's get the input. Move input equals input dot get axis horizontal. Then set the RB dot velocity to new vector two. And for X, we will give it the speed multiplied by the input multiplied by time dot delta time. And Y will just keep as it is for now. And now let's check if the jump button is pressed. We 
we will do rb dot velocity equals vector 2 up multiplied by the jump force. And that's it for now, a very simple controller. Back in Unity, we need to set the speed and the jump force. And also on the rigid body, let's go to the constraints and lock the Z rotation to avoid the player falling on its side. Now let's drag our tile object to the asset folder to create a prefab out of it. Let's open up the tile script. We need a public game object to reference our tile object, a private animator, and a private boolean stepped on, which we will set to false by default. In our star function, let's set the animator, anim equals tile.getComponentAnimator. Let's remove the update function, we don't need it. Now let's add the onCollisionEnter2D function, and that takes parameter of type Collision2D. We want to check if the game object we have collided with has the name player. If so, we want to trigger the animation. Anim.setBool stepped on, which is the parameter we define in the animator, comma true. Back in Unity, drag the tile sprite object to the variable in the tile script. So now if we click play, our animation is working, however it's looping, and we don't want that. In our assets folder, if we select the bloody animation, we can uncheck the loop time checkbox. And now if we play again, it works as we wanted it to. Now we want to create a tile map. Right click to the object. We want to be able to paint the tile map using our prefab. And in order to do that, we have to add Unity's 2D extras to our project. I'll leave a link in the description. It's on GitHub and it's super easy to add to your projects. So what you want to do is download the project, unzip it somewhere, then in your project folder, go to the package folder, and create a new empty folder, com.unity.tilemap.extras. And you can just copy paste it from the GitHub page. And inside of it, paste the unzip files you just downloaded. So now when we go back to Unity, it should start importing the package automatically. Now let's create our prefab brush. Right click, create brushes, prefab brush. Name your brush and then when you click on it, you will see a slot in which you can drag your tile prefab. And now we have our brush. Go to Windows, 2D Tile Palette, and let's create a new palette. Name it whatever you like, and then down here in this dropdown, we can select our brush. Now click on the brush icon, and we're ready to paint. I'm doing something very simple for this example, just two platforms. Now we can delete the single platform we have in the scene, but don't forget to apply it first. Now if we click play, we can see that all of our platforms are behaving as expected and we, we're leaving an animated trail behind us. Now I'm just gonna quickly add the running animation and flip the character when changing direction. So this is a tad more pleasant to look at. If we go to the player animator and add a new parameter is running, then add a new transition to and from the running animation. Then as before, down here add our parameter to the conditions. If we go back to the script, add a game object for the player sprite object and a private animator anim. We can set that in our start function anim equals player sprite dot get component animator. So now on update, we check if move input is not zero. We play the running animation and, and if not, we, we don't. We also want to flip the character to face the right direction. So at the top, we add another variable is facing right equals true by default. And then on update, we check if the player is moving to the left, but facing right, we want to flip it. And if the player is moving to the right, but not facing the right, then again, we want to flip it. So 
So now when we play, it looks so much better. For the two particle effects, you want to also draw them frame by frame. It's not a lot of work and there's so many references you can find on Google. You want one that looks a little bit more like smoke and one that has more of a splash effect. I end up with these two sprite shades at the end. So now I'm going to import this in Unity and do the usual. Mark them as multiple and slice the sprite sheets into single frames. It's important you have your frames in a single sprite sheet. Now we need to create two particle systems. They're gonna be very similar, but let's start with the dust. So here I want to set the max particles to one. We only want one particle at a time. We want to reduce the star lifetime to something much smaller, so our animation doesn't take too long. And also let's reduce the duration as well. One more thing that I don't seem to have recorded here, you'll see me do it in a moment, but it's to set the simulation space to world so the particle is not glued to the player at all times. Next, we want to change the shape to a box. And we can use these tools right here to adjust the size of the box and the position. Now let's go to texture sheet animation. Enable it and let's drag our frames in. Now we're gonna repeat the exact same process for the blast splash, create a new particle system, and we use the exact same settings, just use the other sprite sheet. You can even duplicate the blood dust and just change the sprites. Now let's go to our player controller and set this up. Let's add a function emit blood dust particle. Here we'll emit a single particle. So first we need a variable at the top for the particle system. Public particle system blood dust. So in our function we will define a new variable emit params and do a new particle system dot emit params. And now we can change some of the particle system parameters. I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description so you can see all the options you have. I'm just going to change the location to be the current position of the player. So now we can do blood dust.emit and we give it the emission parameters that we just modified and one as a number of particles. Now let's just copy paste this to adjust for the splash animation, just changing the name of the function and then adding another variable for the splash particle. Now let's call these two functions within the controller. We want to call the dust animation while the player is running and we want to call the splash animation when the player is jumping. If we now test that in Unity, we can see we're getting really close and it's already looking pretty good. We just have a couple of things to resolve. Right now we're not checking if the player is on the ground so we can end up with a dust effect up here which is not great. So let's expand the player controller to check for that. We will need a public transform feed position, a float check radius, and a layer mask. We will set those up from Unity in a moment. We also need a private boolean is grounded. So now in update, to get that we will use physics 2 d overlap circle and we will give it the position of the transform, the radius, and the layer mask. Let's add a new layer and call that ground. Now let's go to the tile prefab and change the layer to the ground layer. 
Let's create a new empty object inside the player object and call that feed position. Position that at the feet of the player. Now let's set the variables in the player's controller. And now back in the script, we can use the is ground boolean to prevent double jumping and add it to the jump if statement. And now we can also add a check when running to only emit a particle when the player is on the ground. And now back in Unity, let's see it all in action. And we also want to change the order in layer for the particle system to ensure they're rendering behind the ground. And there we go. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep safe and I'll see you soon. Bye.